Before I even start designing any cover art, I usually sharpen my images uh, because some images are very flat and blurry, so I need to touch it before I use it for my official flyer or cover art you know, or any tall flyer. So without any further ado, let's get started. This is uh, just a square, it could be 2000 by 2000, it could be 3000 by 3000, depending on what you want. Uh, if it's for the cover art, it's in 3000 by 3000, it's the normal piece size, but if for, if for a tall flyer, most of the times I use 1080 by 1350. So it just depends, but this one is actually a square. So any two, from two thousand by two thousand, two thousand by two thousand will work perfectly. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is that uh, uh, we'll start with our picture here. So what I basically the first thing I usually do is first of all I try to touch it in the camera raw first before I start adding whatever I need to add on it. So with the camera raw, I'm just going to open it. This is what it looks like with the camera raw added on it. So to add the camera raw, just select it and then you go to uh, future scroll down to camera raw filter and I add it now let me just i'm just going to quickly double click here and show you the settings for this particular image but note that this these sort of settings are not fixed so that that based on uh, on the picture and also based on what you intend to get so first of all i have to sharpen it here with details with details here sharpen it first i then also add noise reduction and also push this noise reduction to color noise reduction to so that it kind of uh, Blend it so they cancel remove all the noise and blend it a little bit. So also I go to light on this light. I also make sure that okay, I pull the white up. And I also reduce this the, the black. Lastly, I also go to effect. With the effects, I also have my texture and I have my clarity and dehaze. Sometimes I use I use a vignette, but for now I use these three. These are the main two that I usually use, and that's all. So once I'm done, just click OK. So this is what I have now. So here is the next step. Um, I'll, I'll just duplicate this. So let me just come down to back here to my this is my actual work here, my actual workspace. Here. This was just like a smart object. So it's my actual work here. So if if I double click, we have this. Anyway, so my actual work here. So this is actual what I'm going to call this one. I'm just going to duplicate first of all. Then I'll call this one a base or oh, before. Then I'll duplicate again. Now. Uh, with this before I'm going to duplicate again I will, and I'm going to call this one HDR HDR now with this a particular with this HDR what I'm going to do is that I will, I will change the blending mode to vivid light scroll down to vivid light and then I will add an invert layer I invert adjustment layer on top of it like this scroll down to invert now when you cut, cut in you have something like this make sure you add a layer mask So make sure you add uh, a clipping mask. Sorry, make sure you add a clipping mask there. So I made a mistake and I was trying to add it on this uh, in on the inverted layer itself. So please make sure that you are not on the inverted layer. That's why you see there's no changes whenever I slide it up and down. It, like there's no change, the threshold, there's nothing there, nothing happens. So uh, it was a mistake. So you need to make sure that you do it on the HDR. So please uh, make sure that you do it on the HDR, this surface blur, and then you yeah, should have something like this. Please make sure, tune it to make sure that I have something similar to this. All right, so that's that's basically it. So once you're done, all you need to do now is to click OK. Please take your time and adjust it for a while. So I'm just going to increase the threshold a bit and maybe add the, adjust the radius so it fits well. So once I'm done, I'm going to click OK. So duplicate the before. Make sure that I have a clipping mask. Duplicate the before. To so have a copy of it. You must not take it up. Always just leave it the way it is. And then you go to filter and then go to filter filter gallery. And then when you go there, you, you have to use uh, the disturb. Go to disturb option, you see this diffuse glow click on it make sure that you have four you have zero four and nineteen as the settings this is just to give it highlights you know it has it gives highlight kind of nice highlight you know now so for this now you need to select the three or the three layers and then group them change the blending mode to overlay you know so you have something like this look at it before and the after before and the after the, the difference is not really that vast now let's try let's let's do it repeat the process process again duplicate the before again Okay, before and I will take it up 
now with this uh, what you need to do is to go to filter again and then go to uh, blur you got ghost and blur to it make sure that everything is blurred you have something similar to this um for this i'm using 19 so let's see what happened now with this you need to add the black and white you need to desaturate it and also uh add an inverted and invert on it invert adjustment on it same thing that we did the other time so now with this again we're going to select everything again my whole shift on select everything make sure that everything you see the screen mass are all clipped on it select everything and then group them again so with this now just change the blending mode now we're going to rename it this one is agr and in the other the one of the first one is agr2 so that's it and with this now we're going to change the blending mode still to overlay so you can see that the before and the after now i'll take the opacity to 30 percent you know to before and after so that's like i have something like this so with this now your image is sharp and straight to the point like it's not like the regular flat image that was sent to you and kind of dark image that was sent to you so please always take your time and do it and the way you're working you're working on it it's in such a way that you can actually swap the image you can actually swap the like always change the picture and then you have something similar so I had to bring the original image so you see how the original image looks like the I mean the image that was sent to me so let's look at the original image and then let's look at after before after you see so you can see the vast change around it even though the, the hand has so much highlight but then that's not an issue you can always adjust that data so I group everything and commit it to a smart object and then went to my filter gallery again and add the diffuse same setting nothing and then just take okay so now you can see the before and the after before the so after. that's basically it. so if you want more more nice uh, videos like this more videos like this on on tricks tips on when content comes to design please do subscribe share and comment